Hey guys, Alvin here and in this video I'm going to show you a simple but effective workflow for editing your aviation photography in Adobe Lightroom. Before we get started, I want to talk about why I'm making this video. As some of you know, I do have an Instagram channel at One More Week to Go where I share a lot of my aviation photography content. And the number one question that I get asked by my Instagram followers is how do you edit your photos? Or how do you make your images pop? How do you introduce so much color in your photos? And are you ever going to make editing tutorials to show us your workflow? So you guys have been asking for a long time. So this is me officially starting to do editing tutorials for you guys. So the plan is actually to make a series of editing tutorials ranging from beginner to more advanced to show you some of the techniques and tricks that I use every day in my editing workflow. As some of you know, my normal workflow is actually a combination of Lightroom, Photoshop, as well as some additional paid add-ons such as Topaz, Denoise and Sharpen. So I will talk a bit more about those applications in some future videos, but I really wanted to start off with something nice and simple, and that's Adobe Lightroom. I chose to start off with Adobe Lightroom for several reasons. Number one, it's simply the most common choice for a lot of photographers to do their photo editing. And secondly, it's a really easy uh, beginner friendly application. Whether you're a beginner photographer or you're just getting started in editing, Lightroom is a really great place to get started because of how easy it is to use and how beginner friendly it is. Also, it's a relatively inexpensive application, so it's a bit more affordable for everyone. So that's kind of why I chose to start off with Adobe Lightroom. So enough chatter from me, let's jump right into the application and get started editing. So for this tutorial, I've already pre-selected an image that I want to use. We're going to use this image here of a Delta 757 lining up on runway 24 left at LAX uh, in preparation for departure. Um, we got some marine layer clouds rolling in here. Um, and as you can see, the photo itself is a little bit washed out due to the lighting conditions and the weather conditions at the time. And so I'll show you how I use Lightroom's really powerful sliders to go and fix that up. So first of all, let's go over to the develop tab. And this is where you'll do all of the editing on the photo. As you can see, you have all these sliders here on the right side, and this is where you'll be uh, applying your edits with these sliders. Generally, I work from top to bottom. Uh, you don't have to go in order, but that's kind of the order that I like to go in. It seems to work pretty well for me. Up here, you have the histogram, and this chart scares a lot of beginner editors, but it's a really, it's a pretty powerful chart to understand. So. This chart here basically represents the different pixels in your photo. Um, on the left side are where you'll see your, your shadows and your low lights represented. Over in the middle are more your midtones, so kind of the things that are medium brightness. Um, and over on the right side are where you have your whites and your highlights. So a well-balanced and well-contrasted photo, you should see a histogram that has a spectrum that's uh, nicely spread out along the entire range. In this case, we don't really have any blacks and shadows and we have very few uh, highlights and whites. So a lot of our colors, as you can see, because of how flat this image is, a lot of those tones are sitting here over in the, the middle section. So our job through this editing is to actually make this histogram more spread out um, and ultimately what that will result in is a more uh, well contrasted and well exposed photo. So let's see what we can do with these sliders to make that happen. Uh, first of all, we have the temperature and the tint slider here. Normally if you have white balance set as auto on your camera, you don't have to really worry too much about this section as your camera should do a relatively good job of setting those for you. Temperature just kind of talks about uh, how cold or warm your photo will look. So as you can see, as we drag it to the left, it becomes colder and more blue. Drag it to the right, it becomes more orange or warmer. Double click it just to reset it back to the default. Again, if your white balance is set to a shot, which is 
what your camera interprets the white balance to be, you shouldn't need to do any further adjustment here. And same for tints, I would recommend letting the camera handle that. And of course, white balance by itself, it just means that things that are white in the photo are actually appearing as white in the image. So for example, the fuselage of the plane should be white, or the markings on the runway should be white. For some reason, if out of camera, your photo came out like this, maybe you forgot to set the white balance correctly on your camera, then you would go and adjust the slider so that the whites in the image uh, become white. So, and if you don't want to eyeball it, another thing you can do is click this white balance picker tool here and just click on something that is supposed to be white in the, uh, in the photo. So for example, well, see that didn't, this thing doesn't always work the way you want it to because of the different tones in the photo. Let's try seeing if I, okay, yeah, the, that did a better job. So I, I clicked the a white balance selector on the plain body, which I know is supposed to be white. And so that kind of um, gave a pretty good white balance here. But as you can see, these settings are pretty close to what the camera gave us right out of the camera. So normally I would say let the camera handle the white balancing for you. So there's one less thing to worry about when you have to edit. Moving on to these sliders here, these are really about the, the different tones of the photo. So the shadows, the highlights, and this is where you'll see a lot of the changes happen as you work your way through these sliders. First of all, in terms of exposure, I think the photo is pretty well exposed. It's not too dark, it's not too bright. Let's leave this one as it is right now. We can come back to it later as we change some of these other sliders. Contrast is a big one here. Contrast slider makes brighter things more bright and darker things in the photo even darker. So as we increase the contrast, let's see what happens to the photo. So you can see the brighter sections of the photo, such as the plane's body uh, and the clouds have become whiter and the darker sections of, for example, the runway and this darker patch of gray here on the apron uh, have become darker. If we go the opposite direction, as you can see, uh, things become pretty flat. So in this case, because of how washed out the photo is, I'm going to just bump up the, the contrast to about 80. Um, and having a quick look at the histogram here, that does do a little bit to spread out the different pixels a bit more on the spectrum. Moving on to the highlights, this adjusts the brighter sections of the image. So if we want it to be brighter, we can even drag it up. In this case, I think it's good to just leave it as it is, as the plane's body is pretty bright already and the clouds, I think, are decently bright. So let's leave the highlights slider. The shadows, I do want to bring back some of the shadows here. I think these are not, I think the runway is not dark enough where the, the shadows are pretty non-existent at this point. So let's drag the shadow slider down to make those shadows darker. In this case, I'm going to go all the way here, minus 100. Now, you don't always want to be that extreme in your photo editing. I think it has to suit the photo that you're editing. In this case, I think it justifies using a, a heavier adjustment on the, on the shadow slider. Uh, moving down to the whites, again, this talks about the kind of the brighter sections of the image. So if you were to drag it up, you can see the image becoming a bit brighter. I think maybe whites will just bump it up to plus 15, plus 10, just to give a little bit more boost to how bright the plane is. And then for blacks is the opposite. We're going to adjust some of the darker sections and I do want to bring back uh, some of the shadows here to increase the contrast. Something like minus 33 here in this case looks good to me. So you can now go back to any of these sliders and readjust it if you want. If you think something uh, can be a bit brighter, you can go and adjust the highlights or the whites. If you think the shadows can be a bit more uh, defined, you can go and move around these sliders a bit more. Another tip here is to actually hold Alt when you're dragging the, these sliders. 
And now I'll show you if you're clipping the image or not. So I'm holding Alt and I'm dragging the white slider up. As you can see, things are starting to clip. And what do I mean by clip? Well, that just means that the white sections of the image have become so white, it's just become pure white. There's no more shade in, the, in that pixel. And so if you hold Alt and move the white slider, you can see that these highlighted sections have become blown out. They've become too white. They've become overexposed in the image. You don't want that in your final edit. So this is a good way to check if you're you know, pushing the sliders a bit too much. Typically what you want is to not have any clipping or very minimal clipping. Similarly, this works for the blacks too. Your blacks can also clip, which means uh, your darks have become so dark that it's just now black on the image. As you can see, um, that's pretty evident here. So let's return the blacks to what we had set it on before. And let's move on to the next sliders. So the texture slider, I don't really use personally that much. This reintroduces some of the textures and the details uh, around the image. I find that what it does, it actually introduces some noise. So I like the image to be a bit more clean. So I don't really touch the texture slider too much, but you can play with it if you want to. Clarity is one that um, kind of makes things a bit more crispy and a bit more defined around the, those edges, but it does take out some of the vibrancy of the image. So use this one in moderation. Typically, I like to set it to around plus 10 just to give it a little bit of boost. Dehaze is one of the really powerful sliders in Lightroom. And while it can be really great to bring out the details in your photo, I find that it can often be overused by a lot of people. And so I'll show you what I mean. As you move the dehaze slider up, what it does is it kind of, it's in the name, right? It, it cuts through the haze of the photo and just brings back all that color and the contrast. It's kind of like a contrast on steroids. As you move it up, as you can see, it does do a lot to make your photo like really dramatic and moody. But I find that, you know, if you go overboard on this, the colors start becoming unnatural, things start getting a bit messy, and it just doesn't look, it just doesn't have a very pleasant feeling. So what I do is maybe bump it to like, between plus 10 or plus 20 is kind of the range that I go with. In this case, I don't think we even need that much. Plus 10 looks good to me. So yeah, play with the dehaze slider, but be careful of how much you're actually using here. I think here less is more for dehaze. Uh, moving on to vibrance and saturation, these deal with the different color tones in the photo. So uh, vibrancy increases, you know, kind of the, how rich the colors look. Uh, similarly for saturation, honestly, I don't really know the technical difference between the two. I just know that both of them affect the colors to become more rich and more vivid. So play with those two sliders. I typically boost the vibrance a little bit and I leave the saturation on zero. Moving on to the tone curve, uh, it's a little bit more advanced. We won't really use it here, but what essentially this does is it uh, allows you to create like control points to affect the brightness and darkness of, of different uh, sections of the photo. So again, it it, you can use these curves to manipulate the shadows, the darks, and the, the light sections. So if I was to create a, a control point here and I drag it up, it's using this, this, this kind of curve, this, this curvy line to affect the, those different tones. It's a bit more advanced, so we're not going to use it in this photo, but uh, it's there if you want to play around with it. Uh, this HSL color section allows you to adjust the saturation and brightness and hue of the different color channels in your photo. So if you were ever wanting to maybe just boost the saturation on the red part of this tail, for example, you can adjust the red slider under the saturation tab. As you can see, the red has become a bit more vivid, but everything else remains the same. So if there was a particular color you wanted to boost or particular colors you wanted to perhaps mute a bit, like you don't want the green, the green section to be that green, you can bring down the green and the aqua sliders a bit. And you can play with that and be a bit creative with these colors. 
In this photo, what I think I'll do is I'll just boost the reds a little bit to kind of bring back the Delta logo on the tail there. But everything else I think is looks pretty good as it is. I'm, not, I'm just gonna leave it. Moving on to the color grading tab, uh, I don't really do anything with this, but you can. Uh, again, it's a bit more on the advanced side. But what it allows you to do is move this this dot around this color wheel to affect different uh, tones and colors in the photo so for example you can if you wanted to tint the highlights a certain color or tint the highlights into a warmer range you can drag this this color wheel over on this side and maybe you want to tint the shadows to a bit more bluish uh, you can do that but obviously that I don't think that looks that great with this photo so I'm not going to touch it. Finally moving on to the detail section this is where we do the sharpening and manage the noise that is inherent in any photo. So first of all if we zoom in a bit you can see that if you change the magnification to a bit closer whoops yeah let's do a hundred percent magnification so if you zoom into the photo you can see that there is quite a bit of noise from the photo. Uh, and that's because I shot this at ISO 500, but also because of all the edits that we've done uh, up here with these sliders, boosting different colors uh, and the different uh, tones of the photo. So that will introduce some noise as you're editing. What we wanna do here under noise reduction is to get rid of that noise without uh, sacrificing too much of the detail. So on the luminance tab, start dragging this up and you can see that the noise starts becoming a bit smoothed out. But again, you don't want to go way overboard because that will make, as you can see, it makes things kind of a bit too soft, uh, kind of like cartoony, like a painting. So bring it back down to just enough to get rid of a lot of the noise, but not too much that it starts kind of turning your, your photo into a painting. I think around 60 is, is good there. Now moving back up to the sharpening tab, because you've gone and done this noise reduction, now you need to go and sharpen up the photo a bit uh, because it's gone a bit soft, on the, especially around the edges, you know, where the, the plane's wing meets the, the runway. Uh, those are the areas where really the sharpening will help bring that back out. So what you want to do is move the sharpen slider up. As you can see, things like the Delta font has become a bit more sharp. Um, but again, that will, you don't want to sharpen everything because that it's going to reintroduce some of the noise that we had to get rid of using noise reduction. So what you can do there is actually adjust the masking slider. So hold Alt and slide the masking slider up. What this does is actually, it restricts the sharpening to just the main edges of the photo. So as you move the masking slider up, you can see that only the, the strongest edges are still highlighted. What this means is that the sharpening will only be applied to those highlighted sections. What I like to do here is put the masking somewhere around here where it's highlighting the main edges of the plane, some of the main markings on the runway and leave it there. And what that will do is will restrict the sharpening, limit the sharpening to only those areas. So then you can boost the sharpening a bit even a bit more without it affecting kind of the, the textures on the runway and reintroducing that noise. So play around with the sharpening and masking to get a good balance between recovering detail and getting rid of noise. Now finally, under lens correction, we just want to check these two boxes, remove chromatic aberration and also enable profile corrections. What remove chromatic aberration does is that it, when you have very strong contrast edges, sometimes there is like a pink tone that gets uh, introduced as a artifact of the photo. Probably there isn't much in this one because there wasn't that much contrast to begin with in the photo. That's what this checkbox will help with. Uh, secondly, enable profile corrections. 
Every length that you use, whether it's like a 100 to 400, 200 to 600, or even like a, a wide 16 to 35, it will have inherently some distortion in the lens and that will manifest itself in the photo when you're editing. So what Enable Profile Corrections does, it will automatically choose the lens profile that you used to take the photo and also the camera and it will fix that distortion for you in the photo. So if I uncheck it and check it again, notice how before there was kind of like a warp, the middle section was kind of warped, or actually it's probably the, the outer sections that are warped in. But when I check it, it automatically knew my Sony camera, the model of the lens, in this case I took the shot with the 200 600 millimeter and it applied this uh, profile correction to fix that inherent distortion in the lens. So really just for every photo you're editing, just check these two boxes. You can't go wrong there. You don't have to worry about any of the transform effects or calibration tabs. Um, and so really that's the end of the edit. And if you can see, look at the before and after. So this on the left side is the before and the right side is the after. So again, you can look at the before and after and you can go back and re readjust some of the sliders here. You know, maybe we can, we can use a bit more dehaze after looking at the final image or maybe it bump up the whites even a little bit more just to get that extra contrast and maybe push down the blacks a little bit. Another thing that you can do once you've kind of done the initial edit is to use some graduated filters to add some extra dimension in the photo. So what I like to do is to use graduated filters to emphasize some of the lighting conditions. So in this case, there are some patchy clouds here over on the, on the right side. And on the left side, you know, the runway is a bit darker. And you have this dark patch over here. So maybe what we can do is add a graduated filter from the left, stretching to the right side, and actually dragging down the exposure uh, to to emphasize, you know, can have, have that differentiation between the left and the right. So maybe I want the left side to be a bit darker. On the right side, maybe a bit brighter to emphasize those clouds. So just by adding some graduated filters, you can get some additional depth in your photos. So taking a look at the before and after, there you go. The left side is the original very flat, no contrast at all. And now we've reintroduced that contrast over to here, uh, brought back those colors, and added a bit more uh, depth using those graduated filters. And finally, if you're done with the edit and you wanna export it out into a JPEG, um, just right click on the photo, click export, uh, export again. I personally have a preset for my export preferences, but what you can do is just choose the export location and then under file settings, you want to choose JPEG quality set to 100 with the color space in sRGB and click export. And there you go. That is a quick and simple workflow for editing your aviation photography in Adobe Lightroom. Keep in mind that not every photo is going to be the same. So your sliders and the settings you use are going to have to be different for every photo that you edit. The trick is to learn what each slider does to your photo and then you'll be able to master it to use in any photo that you choose. Let me know in the comments below if that was helpful to you and if you were able to follow along and do a few edits on your own. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you'll stay in the loop for more editing tips and techniques on aviation photography. As always, thanks for watching, happy plane spotting, and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.